John is seated behind a desk reviewing Elva's application. Elva, nervous but hopeful, sits across from him. Elva, thank you for coming. Can you tell me a bit about yourself? Thank you, sir. I come from a small village, and my family is struggling. I'm hardworking and willing to learn. I just need a chance to support them. I see. We have a large house. Responsibilities can be demanding. Are you prepared for that? Yes, sir. I'll do my best to meet your expectations. Elva nervously stands in the kitchen, glancing around at the various utensils and ingredients. Master John enters. How's your first day going, Elva? It's challenging, but exciting. Good to hear. If you ever need help or have questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your support. Elva is focused on her work, chopping vegetables. John enters the kitchen, observing her with a certain fascination. You know, Elva, beauty like yours is a rare find. Sir... I'm just a maid doing my job. Elva, feeling uneasy, tries to assert herself and set boundaries. Elva, after a day's work, sits alone in her room, reflecting on her interactions with Master John. What's happening to me? Why do I keep thinking about Master John? Maybe I just need some rest. Tomorrow is a new day, and I have responsibilities. No more blushing over Master John. These inner dialogues reveal Elva's internal conflict as she grapples with unexpected feelings for Master John. Elva is tidying up the living room when Master John enters. Elva, I wanted to talk to you. Of course, sir. What is it? I think I'm falling for you. I appreciate your kind words, sir. But we come from different worlds. I'm just a maid. Elva, I understand if you need time, but I needed to be honest with you about my feelings. Sir, I never thought I'd say this, but I've been feeling something too. Your kindness, your attention, it's hard not to be affected. So you're saying there's a chance? Yes, sir, there's a chance. John and Elva, having decided to explore a deeper connection, find themselves sharing a moment in John's bedroom. Elva, I've never felt this way before. I'm glad we're giving this a chance. It's all so new to me too, sir. But your sincerity has made it easier. John is hanging out with his friends, Mike and Sarah, in the living room. The conversation takes an unexpected turn. So, John, how's it going with Elva? You two seem pretty close. Oh, Elva? Yeah, it's all right. All right. Oh, come on, John. Spill the beans. Is she the one? Nah, not really. I mean, she's nice, but I don't think there's anything special there. Really? You seemed pretty into her. Well, you know... Appearances can be deceiving. Maybe there's a hidden love story there. Yeah, right. A love story with a maid. Classic. No way. She's just someone I see every day. Nothing more. Nothing less. Sure. Sure. Just a maid. Not someone to be loved, right? Exactly. Let's drop it. John is hanging out with his friends, Mike and Sarah. Elva enters the room, catching the tail end of their conversation. <laughs> oh, seriously, John, a love story with the maid? Oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, it's just a working relationship, nothing more. Elva, hearing their conversation, stands at the doorway, feeling disheartened. Elva, everything okay? Just work, sir. Good night. Elva, alone in her room, reflects on the conversation she overheard between John and his friends. Just work, they say. Nothing more. Nothing less. 
Why did I even believe there could be something more? He sees me as just a maid, someone to joke about with his friends. I thought there was a connection, something genuine. But no, it's all a game to him. A love story with the maid, just banter. I won't let him make a fool out of me. If he thinks this is a joke, then maybe it's time to show him the consequences of playing with someone's feelings. I won't be just a maid in his game. As Elvis' disappointment turns into determination, she plots a revenge plan, fueled by the desire to make John understand the consequences of his words and actions. Elva and her friend Rosie sit in the cozy living room, sipping tea, contemplating their plan. Rosie, I've had enough of John's games. It's time to take control. I'm with you, Elva. What do you have in mind? I want to join the company of someone John considers a rival. That's a bold move, Elva. Elva and Rosie share a determined handshake, sealing their pact to use Elva's newfound position to strategically take revenge on John. Elva, now working for John's rival company, sits across from Mr. Anderson, the CEO of the tech firm. Elva, welcome to our team. Now, let's talk strategy. We're aware of the competition, especially John's company. We want to outshine them in every aspect. I'm here to ensure we not only outshine them, but expose any weaknesses they may have. Mr. Anderson, I need to share some personal history. I used to work for John as a maid. He took advantage of me by trapping me in his love angle and used me physically. That's powerful information, Elva. We can use this to our advantage especially during the upcoming board meeting. Let's expose him for who he truly is. Anderson shakes hands, sealing their commitment to exposing John during the board meeting and using the truth about his past to their advantage. Elvis stands alongside Mr. Anderson, ready to expose John's actions in front of the board. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for gathering today. I believe there are certain revelations that the board needs to be aware of regarding our competition. I used to work for John, and during my time with him, I came to know that he is a manipulative person with bad character story. She shared her past life with everyone there. This is a lot to digest. We need time to review the evidence and discuss the implications. We understand. Take the time you need. The board members exchange concerned glances, realizing the gravity of the situation. The room falls silent. Board members determined to gather evidence against John are in a meeting room, discussing their strategy. We need concrete evidence to support Elva and Mr. Anderson's claims. I've heard rumors about his gambling habits. We could dig into that. We can discreetly reach out to former employees for their experiences. Agreed. Let's prioritize gathering information on his personal conduct, gambling, and any exploitive behavior within the company. Also, look into his financial transactions. If he's involved in any shady dealings, we should know about it. And don't forget about any connections he might have that could compromise the company's reputation. John sits nervously, unaware of the storm about to hit. After thorough investigation and careful consideration, it is clear that Mr. John's actions have violated our company's principles and ethical standards. His gambling habits, exploitive behavior, and questionable financial transactions have tarnished our reputation. I told you, John, I warned you about the consequences of your actions. I uh, can't can explain. 
Enough, John. The evidence against you is overwhelming. You betrayed the trust we placed in you. John is pushed out of the boardroom, his world collapsing around him. Elva, we appreciate your courage in bringing this to our attention. We will work on rebuilding the trust and integrity of the company. Elva finds a job in the same company as a replacement for John. Betraying trust, engaging in unethical actions, and putting personal gain above integrity can lead to severe consequences. Upholding honesty and ethical conduct is not just a personal responsibility, but crucial for the well-being of the team and the organization as a whole. Thank you.